Hello everyone. As usual, I'm trying to get my camera to orient correctly, but I think I'm there and I'm going to put my little screen up in my little, in this thing. Let's see. Just trying to make sure that my orientation is correct. And let's get this on camera here. I'd love to have it at this orientation, but I don't know if that is showing up right. So I'm gonna get on my other, I'm gonna get on here and see if this looks right. So please stand by. By the way, if any of you wanna paint this with me, I made the reference and the line drawing available on my community tab to all my community members. So anyone that's a $3 or over member can get that line drawing from my community tab right now. All right, let's see. Okay, here's my little live feed here. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> it's sideways. It want, See, it wants me to be in an up and down orientation. And why? Why can't we just have it? Why can't we just have it like this so you can see my palette and my painting and this? No, but no, no, we can't do it that way. So, okay, fine. Okay, fine, I will change it. But it's just harder to get my palette on in this orientation, YouTube. I don't like to paint live this way. So, that's annoying. You guys get a good look at my plants, I guess, this way, but then you can't see my palette. But I will show you my palette as I work, so no worries. Um, let me know. Hi, Sue. Hi, Emily. Good to see you. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I don't really have a good plan for this bunny. I I kind of, I really want to make it beginner friendly, but I'm, I'm very... The playful part of me wants to just splash around and do crazy stuff that isn't very easy to follow. <laughs> but it, and it's not very beginner friendly. I want you guys to be able to paint along with me. So maybe I'll just, I will try to paint this as straightforward as possible. How about that? And I've got my Neato tape. I'm painting this on Hippie Crafter paper. There should be a link in my description to this student grade cellulose paper. And this is a great paper to just play on because it's cheap and you don't feel bad if you mess up a painting and you won't feel like you're wasting paper. So that's a plus. This is, by the way, Bon Bon the Rabbit. And uh, Bon Bon the Rabbit is, um, just a minute. Uh, all right, I want to make sure I'm seeing. All right, sorry. I'm gonna to have to set up my other camera. I learned my lesson when I did my live last time to <laughs> record also on this phone because I need video for my Patreon tutorial that doesn't suck. So I'm gonna set this up to record on my other camera too. And while I'm getting set up, I'm just going to use my regular 10 paints that I always use. Um, I always use um, the same 10 paint colors. You can view my paint colors on uh, one of my recent uh, videos that I made. If you are curious about the same 10 colors I always use. I will get better at doing these lives. Okay, I'm sorry. 
I'm so sorry, I'm making you guys just sit there. All right, so I'm gonna take this down. I use a lightweight backing board. Um, you can also wrap cardboard with masking tape, and that makes a nice backing board. And then I just tape my paper down. I don't stretch my paper. I mean, I don't really get stretching paper because it's still gonna warp when you re-wet it, and then it'll flatten back out when it dries. So I'm not a believer in stretching paper because even if you stretch it, it warps when it gets wet. It's just what watercolor does. All right. I'm gonna get my handy dandy size eight round, which I always use. And this is the problem with this bunny. Um, it's pretty flat, uh, a gray white color. There's not a lot of shadows in it. So I'm gonna add a lot of shadows using my imagination and hopefully it will work for us. So I've got my size eight round and maybe what we should do first is the eye because that's fun, right? So that means I'm gonna get my size four round, which is smaller brush. And I will put my little picture up for you guys so you can see. And I'm gonna start out with some nice burnt sienna. About milk consistency, I'd say. And just paint in the main idea of the eye. So that's just straightforward burnt sienna. For the, and this is what we would call an underpainting. Good morning, Forever Learning Art. So good to see you. I'm having to check my computer behind me for um, anyone who might come in and say hi because I'm using all my screens right now to record this so that I get a recording both for you all as my live um, feed and later Patreon tutorial, which I record everything for Patreon. All right, so there's the basic iris color, right? And then we can get some burnt sienna and we can mix some black in with it to make a chocolate brown. We could mix Windsor Violet in with it. We could mix French Ultramarine. All those colors will make a nice chocolate brown. And we want a cream consistency and we want to dot it in to this corner while it's all still wet. So we get a nice, uh, a nice blending, natural blending with out having to blend the paint just blends itself when you paint it into wet paper right so I like to do that and I'm, I'm gonna let that dry so that's gonna dry and hopefully look really good all right so we got that in that's part of the fun part and let me give you a little tip while I have your attention for eyes 
And the same goes usually for noses and other pieces, parts, ears, whole bodies. You want to think in terms of getting a light, a medium, and a dark value in each pieces part, <laughs> whether it's an ear or a nose or a background or whatever. And if you haven't seen my Rembrandt edges, you know, you gotta go watch that. That'll teach you a lot about values in the background. All right, I've got my bigger brush now. This is a three quarter oval by Silver Black Velvet. Silver Black Velvet makes this great set of three brushes. It's an oval, an eight round, and I think a zero or a size one little tiny, maybe even a script brush. I really like it. And so now I'm gonna paint the back side of the bunny and I'm gonna join him to the background. So I'm not gonna think like a person, a regular lay person who doesn't know much about art. I'm gonna paint like an artist here, okay? And I'm gonna think in terms of joining the back of the bunny to the background, okay? And I'm gonna let some splashes happen. And I'm just gonna paint that right over as if it was all one thing, right? All right. So that's gonna be the back of the bunny. And here's some grass textures that I'm creating, right? That'll dry and it'll create grass textures. And then my eye sees some purple down in here. So I'm gonna put some purple. We're gonna have a bunny with a purple chest. Just very T consistency, very non-committal, right? And he gets dark in here where his legs are, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. And you can you can pull this edge out with your finger like this so it's not like a too flat of a edge. And you can, um, you're, you're cooking with gas if you can remember to attach different parts to other parts. So I just made this join the blue in the background. So that's always a good thing to do as well. Hi, Emily from Texas. I love the Rembrandt principle too. Isn't it amazing? Did you guys go check out, um, what's his name? James Gurney's channel. Oh, it's so good. Hi, Lisa in Colorado. Ooh, someone from South Africa. Hello from South Africa. How exotic and exciting is that? <laughs> All right, so I like these. Um, Splashes I got too. I like splashes. I think it feels like animal energy, you know? And it also just puts me in an artistic mindset when I splash. And I imagine these splashes are like animal energy. I don't know. All right. Who knows what negative painting is out there? Someone put in the comments if they do or don't know what negative painting is. Hello from New Jersey. Elizabeth Madeira. This is so awkward because I'm having to look behind me. You know what I could do? Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. I could put my, um, <laughs> I will learn how to do this eventually, but I need to put my laptop over here. Then I would have one, two, three, four screens all right here on my desk um, so that I can see the comments as they come in. Emily, yes, it's the space outside your subject. Lisa Woofer, you're learning about negative painting. Okay, so here's a little question just to get your brain thinking. Is this ear the negative space or is this triangle between the ears the negative space? Someone tell me what they think in the in the in the comments. 
any noodle. Yes, I agree. I love painters who that's their focus is to do negative painting, but I'm going to paint in between these ears and y'all tell me, is this the negative painting in the comments? And I'm going to just keep it really loose. We're not going to get too um, persnickety. And while this is still wet, I'm going to float in some bolder blue. And I'm just gonna let it do what it wants though. I'm not gonna like tell it to go a certain place. And then I'm gonna put um, this purple too, cause it's pretty, <laughs> right? That's why, that's why I'm doing it. And I wanna paint over here, but I don't want to mess up these dots. Emily, yes, between the ears is negative space. Sue, the triangle. Yes, the triangle. That's right, Sue. The triangle. And Sue and Emily have it right. Lisa Wolfer. Yes, you got it right. Yay. If I had a prize, I would give it to you. <laughs> you got it right. Uh, all right. So I think that's a good place. And y'all, our Rembrandt principal would say, Let's think about where to put our dark on dark edges, light on light, light on dark and dark on light. So here could be a dark on dark. You usually put your dark on dark edge where? In the shadows or in the bright lit side? You put your dark on dark edge in the shadow side. So the shadow is coming over the bunny's tushy. We're gonna pretend. This reference is pretty flat light, which isn't the best kind of picture to paint from, but that is where you would put your dark on dark edge. Your light on light edge might be in a more unimportant area, but where the light is hitting it. So this could be a light on light edge here. It could be light on light here. We'll just see how the painting develops. It could be over here, um, dark on light. It's harder because this is not a dark bunny. And I found that if you have three of the four pairings, you're going to be okay. So if we can't get a dark bunny on light background, we're going to still love and accept ourselves. Okay? Yeah, we are. So while this is drying, what I could do is paint some details. And I am horrible with painting things, but this is wet and dragging my hand. I am gonna try, I'm, I'm juggling a lot of things. You might not think about it, but I'm juggling a lot of things right now because um, I have to keep myself out of two cameras and it takes a lot of, my, my brain's kind of like <laughs> exploding. I'm gonna put some clean, clear water. I want a soft, uh, red nose that kind of explodes out. So I am going to get all this wet so that my, have you guys seen my little um, videos, my shorts about uh, napthol red and how it explodes? For some reason, my, this brush has orange on it, but when it dries, you won't be able to see that. So that's all right. Um, but I'm getting a big, not, you don't want to puddle Let's sop some of this up because it is kind of puddling and I don't want to paint into a puddle, especially with this powerful matte file red because as you're about to see, if you haven't seen my short about exploding uh, naphthol red that diffuses like crazy. Yes, Elizabeth Madeira, you're right the neg about the negative space too. So, um, so watch what it does. Oh, it's not exploding as much. Well, that's kind of good. I don't want it to explode. Okay, well, if you watch my shorts video about Napthal Red, it just absolutely explodes. It might be because of this paper. That's interesting. But I actually like that it's being a little bit more well-behaved and staying in place. But we want to get a cute little bunny nose, right? And if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've seen me talk about how... Um, adding a little touch of red to your paintings really can add some wow factor. 
All right, since this is behaving and staying where I want it to, I'm gonna put some more. Oh, now it's exploding when I put cream consistency. Interesting. Okay, so I'm gonna just let that kind of explode into the wet paper. Also, you see how this puddle is forming? You can take a piece of toilet paper if you don't want it puddling that much and just dab that up so you don't have puddles and it kind of makes it dry unevenly like if I left that there would be like a dark puddle uh, or a dark area where the paper is concave or it's caving in so I don't necessarily want that all right but look how pretty that is if you just let the watercolor paint itself. And the, the way you let a watercolor paint itself is you pre-wet the paper and then just drop the paint in in a few places and let it explode the way it wants to. That's why uh, naphthol red's fun to play with in that way. All right, this year I still don't wanna mess up these dots. So, um, I know a fun little thing. Uh, Matthew Hayden Jean does this. He paints just like a little sliver of background around the very edge of his subject. So to be playful, I'm going to do this. And this is my little nod to Matthew Hayden Jeans, who he's a member on my um, Facebook group. Y'all come and join my Facebook group. And um, he's a very extreme. He used to paint, paint for Hallmark cards. He's an extremely... Um, talented and capable painter <laughs> and he's given me all kinds of good little tidbits of juicy um, watercolor goodness but um, that's kind of a fun uh, way to tell the story of the edge I'm just playing really too and then there's this cute little shadow what do you guys think about me making a video about shadows Um, maybe what color should you make shadows? Would that be a good question? Leave me a comment and tell me if you would like a, a video, like a long form video. It's so hard for me to come up with ideas for videos that you guys would be interested in. I don't know why it's so hard for me, but it's just hard. So now I'm doing these live videos lately, but um, tell me what your questions are about how to paint shadows and what can I answer in my video about that. So anyway, he has this cute shadow that tells the story. Shadows tell the story of 3D dimension. It tells about, this shadow is telling us the story about this cute little chin that juts out in space and creates this shadow under the bunny, right? So it's just really cute and it joins right into the background. And even in the reference photo, the background and the shadow are joined. So you don't even have to get too fancy and make that up. And then it's kind of dark right in here it gets really dark because it's i don't know a deeper area so we'll put that in yeah shadows especially cast shadows that are harsh like on my golden retriever emily is that the golden retriever you just sent me like harsh shadows are hard i avoid them because they look too dark so I don't even like painting those. All right, in the reference, this bunny, y'all keep telling me, asking me questions that would be good for me to uh, address in a video about um, shadows. Because if you guys have some good questions, I might make a video based on those questions. That would be helpful. All right, so what I'm now doing is pre-wetting the pink part of the ear. So I'm getting ready to paint the pink part. And but the way I'm doing that is just getting it wet. I'm not getting it puddling, just glistening. And then I'm gonna get some naphthol red, probably about milk consistency. I'll probably make these uh, bunny ears a little bit stronger in some parts anyway. And then I'm gonna add some purple because I see it changes pretty clearly even in the reference 
to a purple. So you don't have to get this exact, just get the idea for your bunny. I'm gonna leave a little sliver of white edge. And I think these are dry enough I can paint over them. I can blot out them to take the excess water out and then I can paint this ear too. And this is dry enough, I think it'll hold a shadow. So I'm gonna get some darker blue for this shadow under his chest, right here, that tells a story between his chest and his leg. So I'm getting some French ultramarine, which is a darker blue. When you want darks, you mix with a French ultramarine. When you want lights, you use cobalt blue. And I have just junk on my palette, which is so useful. So that's just a good way to get a darker blue. And I'm just gonna use that to tell the story. Actually, I don't want that to, of his leg. And then I'm gonna get clean, clear water, wring it out a little bit, and then run it along here to just soften that. So that kind of tells the story of where his legs are. Do I plan my paintings with a value study? Well, I should, <laughs> but I don't. Usually, what I do is I just paint a whole painting, and then it usually has lots of things that need to be fixed, and then I paint it again, and then I understand it, so it comes out a lot better. That's what I usually do. All right, I think we can paint the pink part into this bunny's ear right along here. So I'm gonna get it wet. And it stops right at the top of his forehead, so that'll tell the story of his forehead. And then I'll just get some milky naphthol red in my brush here and just put that in. And I'll let it spread. And then, so it's not a flat red, because that's boring. And I'm gonna like paint the furs, because there's furs. And um, I'm just gonna get a little furry there. Another thing that I plan to do is, this is uh, Daniel Smith Permanent Green Light, which is a gorgeous young green. When your greens look too um, crazy, you can mix them with a little bit of red to make them look more natural. And that really helps the green look like a better green for whatever reason. And I'm just gonna put in some grass some of this um, melt into what's already wet. And so then we don't have to paint bunny feet. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. Does anyone want to paint bunny feet? I don't. All right. And don't think if I rest my hand on this, it's going to run. So I can do some of the darker bunny mouth darks. And I think that'll help pull the face together some. So he's got a the top of his nose. It's 
pretty dark like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a pink chin, I think. That side comes down like that, kind of. And one thing that I would really like to get in is the sky reflection, which is really pretty, in his eye. So I'm gonna paint with milk to tea consistency blue and a lot of the white here. And then I'm going to get thicker blue for the top because it's really a lot darker up towards the top of his pupil and let that melt down like that. Actually, now that I look at it, he's got it's lighter up in here. I'm going to wring out my brush and sop some of that up. And then I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll go in and put in the rest of the black of the pupil. All right. A lot of times what I like to do too to ground the animal is just put in some darker, a few darker greens down in here. This is still puddling too much. Right in there, so I'll get that up. All right, and then this is I don't think this will cauliflower, and even if it does, I don't really care. I'm gonna tell the story of the back of his back a little bit better by putting that in. And that gives our bunny a little bit more shape, right? Maybe a little bit more purple down in here. This purple is so strong, you gotta be careful with it. Look at that. Just pick that up. So that tells the story of where his um, tushy goes around in space. All right, so I think that's a good place to, I think that's a good start. What do y'all think? I'm Marcia from Nicaragua. How fun to have someone from Nicaragua. I've been to Nicaragua and uh, I was planning on just going to Costa Rica and my friend and I decided to be more adventurous and come over to Nicaragua on a bus. <laughs> so we did and it was so, we loved Nicaragua. We liked Nicaragua better than Costa Rica. So 
Um, we just thought it was really a neat country and just the nicest people you could meet um, was my experience. So we really enjoyed it. Oh, hi, Mara from Nevada, Glenda from Ohio, Lynn, North Carolina. Lynn, I'm in South Carolina, so maybe someday when I do a, if I ever do a um, in-person workshop now that I've got my garage done, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll meet you. <laughs> okay, this is really thick um, French ultramarine, so I'm just... Darkening, darkening that up, and he's got this cute little side of his face, and then there's like this shadow. It's not really a shadow; it's kind of like his markings that tell about his rounded mouth. That's really cute. have my drawing right there but like that all right I might put in some of the darks of the um, darks of the eye because I think this is dry enough. So this is all really dark actually here. He's got these neat reflections. Um, so see how now that eye is really coming together. Make sure the side of my hand is not wet and gonna mess up. <laughs> this is so awkward the way I'm standing. Y'all would laugh if y'all saw. See, I just blap right into the eye. But, you know, hey, this is live, so I'm, ugh, this is rough, but I just can't get in a good position. When you're painting, you can move your painting around, and I highly recommend doing that so you can kind of um, get everything the way you want. Look at those little eyelashes. Mine are crazy. I wouldn't call those looking good, but. Uh, and you can darken the corner. And there's like this, his eye. Has like these little bottom lashes down here. How cute is that? I'm just dotting at them and making a hot mess for the most part. Ah, Lynn, you're in, Lynn, you're in, uh, Lynn, you're in, um, Charlotte. That's cool. Yeah, I'm, I've been, I go to Charlotte a lot. Charlotte's a great city. Get this part of his mouth a little bit darker. All right, so we've got the basic structure of our bunny in, right? And now it's just a matter of how much refining do you want to do? Do you want to, for example, um, 
Do you want to put in some dry brush fur? Do you actually want to show his fur? If you do, get some cobalt. Mine's a little dirty and I'm okay with that. And I'm gonna dry off my brush. Then I'm gonna go back in with just a damp brush and get paint on it like that. And then I'm gonna actually, I want it more watery. I don't want these textures to be really subtle, but you know, you can just use the side of your brush. A little. And look how subtle that looks, but it looks very furry. So, um, you know, you can just kind of scrub on the fur textures and it's really easy to do with the side of your brush, not using the tip, but the side. And just do a lot more texture until you are happy with how much your values balance out um, he's got a lot of um, grays in his fur and I'm not really trying to mimic the um, grays in his fur but um, I think he's got a the side of his head um, comes down over here and then it joins over here and then you just keep working these values really it's a matter of thinking in terms of okay what other values do I need to add for this to look right because you can say well it doesn't quite look right so you just keep adding values, you can let this dry. If you need something darker, keep adding values until you get it to where, to you, it looks right. So, he's got some really cute black furs on his face. Should we try that? So I'm just getting some lamp black and then dabbing out my brush, getting lamp black, dabbing out my brush to make sure that I've got kind of a dry lamp black texture and we can put, I mean, that's pretty bold. So that would mean, if I, I'm afraid if I put too bold, then I'll have to redo all these more delicate um, values. Because if you have really uh, bold values, then you got to rebalance the rest of your values to match them. So these are pretty, pretty bold. But it's um, very true to what this bunny actually has in his fur textures so um, mm -hmm. so that's why I kind of kept all this delicate because I didn't want to spend a lot of time having to build up more and more values because that's going to take time I was just trying to get as much of the basic outline and painting done for you guys so you could see kind of where to go with it so, um, he's got these interesting markings. And he's got these textures on his ears too. from Norway. Hello. I get a kick out of people um, coming over the waves, over the internet waves from way far away from where I am. So great to have you. Thanks for joining us. All right. So that's like a great place to start right here, what we have. And this is what I would call an underpainting. And what I would probably do next, uh, when I can concentrate even better, is um, put some darks, just a few darks in to balance this eye. And um, 
I think I would put, for example, I'm gonna get some milk consistency red and just put, okay, so that's really bold. So I'm gonna get water in my brush and wring it out. I'm going in with a kind of a clean, damp brush now. That kind of stained my, kind of stained my um, paper. So, fix that as fast as possible. And then, you know, there, that's a little better. So I'm gonna let this completely dry and I'll probably play with it some more later, but this is a great place to get this painting started and then I'm gonna, I can't draw on it with my pens right now cause it's too wet, but you can use my scribble. You, I've done scribbles in a lot of my videos to kind of pull a painting together and uh, put in the whiskers. Um, I think that would look good. In fact, this might be dry enough. Now in the reference, the whiskers are white on this side and black over here. Well, we're artists. We don't have to do what our reference tells us if we don't want to. So, you know, we can just put in, we can put in whiskers as black if we want. We don't have to follow what the reference tells us to do all the time. All right, so um, the scribbles will really help to, to bring, I actually think feel like this is more rounded here. And also pop, putting some pops, more pops of dark in the background, I think too, would bring this together more and just more detail. Oh, that's nice. The more you can kind of use a jittery motion with your pen, you know, the more interesting lines you'll create. And see, that's already really pulling it together a lot, a lot nicer. So um, that's a great place to start. And these are Micron pens and they're archival and, and I'm pretty sure when, if you paint over these, they will not, um, they won't run on you. <laughs> Hi, oh, Nova Scotia. Hi, Brenda from Nova Scotia. Hi, Kimberly from Alabama. Linda from Norway, Elise from Norway. Thank you for subbing for, with me. Monica, my bunny tutorial is one of your favorites. I've got a lot of bunnies. I don't know what it is about bunnies, y'all, but I've painted a lot of bunnies now. I've got like, I don't know, six, seven, eight bunny tutorials now. So be sure to check out all that goodness. How about that, some bold? That might be too bold, but oh well. Um, Check out my uh, visual index at rachelstudio.com Patreon index and you'll see I got a lot of bunnies and a lot of bunny, uh, a lot of free bunny stuff on my uh, channel here too. So um, I think it would be really pretty. Now I just want to keep playing with it because putting that pen in gets me re excited about this painting. You know, your painting goes through the ugly stage and I all of a sudden become bored, I feel like, and it's hard, y'all, when you get, start getting bored with a painting because you just, you kind of hate it or whatever. I don't hate this, but I'm not saying that, but um, I'm just, I, it needs something more bold over here and then to match this blue, maybe. It needs, um, like that.
that kind of pops out the, I'm gonna tell a, a darker story between the ears, to show off that interesting negative space. I like that green there, that's fun. And I think green against purple is so pretty. Why, I don't know. Um, do you wanna challenge ourselves and think of a, um, maybe we can put in a dark on dark edge and just see, I mean, it might look bad, I don't know. Let's see what it looks like if we put like a more bold, um, dark, um, dark on light edge. Cause we've got, this is dark-ish on dark. I mean, I know this isn't dark, but that kind of gets the idea. And there's plenty of light on dark and there's light on light, but we don't have dark bunny on light background. So how about if, how about if we put it down in here? Would that work? And there goes his, you know, we can just, and I'll attach it to this shadow. Like, yeah, we meant to do that. <laughs> there. Now we have dark on light. I don't know if it works, but I still accept and love myself if it doesn't. Because, hey, we're just experimenting with this painting. It's not a serious painting. It's on hippie crafter paper. We're just playing. We're just trying things. And that's how we learn as artists, is we just try things, right? This little triangle of all right. Hi from here. Hi, Paul. You live it at here. I like it. <laughs> Hi from here. That's where I am too. I'm here. <laughs> uh, let's get some more. Play with some more. Um, how about some splashes of green? I think this painting could use some splashes. I should have stopped like 20 minutes ago, but um, I'm just having fun, just playing around with this and seeing what happens. I would love some bigger splashes. How about like that? Some. I, I'm not, I am not good at getting splashes to go where I want. I want them to go in this area. <laughs> and they're like going over here on my iPad. And then I'm going to get some cobalt splashes down in here. And then to ground a painting, which I think I like to ground a painting by putting more darks um, down in this area. I'm going to get some French ultramarine and Get a lot of water on my brush like that and get a few fairly darks down in here. Darker. And then I'm splatting more water to make some of them join so it doesn't get too busy. You can kind of drag your brush through all that. All right, and I like that dark against his face because it makes his face become the important, um, more important area. And where you put your darkest darks against your lightest lights is that's where the viewer is going to look. So that's why I wanted more dark right there. And look, we have all our edges. We have light on dark, dark on dark. 
uh, light on light, dark on light. And that's a good place, I think, to stop. And then let it sleep. I like to let a painting sleep and think overnight and then come back to it and decide what else it needs. So this was a blast, you all. I really enjoyed this. And let's see if I have any. Hello from Canada, DNF Awesome. Adorable, colorful bunny. Thanks, Sue. I just kind of winged this one to just play with you guys. And um, it was just fun. And I like the purple and the green and the blue. I like that. And I'm going to do more detail work on the eye. But I just can't right now because this is like a hot. Uh, well, it's not a mess. I think it looks good. It's a pretty mess. So, <laughs> um, But it does need refining. But this is a good place to stop, I think. So thank you so much for joining me. Leave me comments if you can think of questions you have about shadows. And um, for those of you who already left questions about shad shadows, thank you. And um, I might make a video about shadows. So y'all have a great Monday and I will see you next time. Now go watercolor your world. I'll give you a little close up. This was fun. Thank you, Mara. I had fun. Bye, Monica. The eye's a little wonky, but the, the um, pupil does look like um, shiny people, right? <laughs> You're welcome, Lisa. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really had fun.